So what is it that you're going to get from this session? So what you are going to get, th the things that you're going to learn from this session are, how is the IT market right now? What are the different prospects? What are the different lines that you can try to enter into IT? And if you're already into IT for 2024, what should be your strategy? So you're going to learn all of this in this webinar. I'm going to talk about all these trends about IT and making a successful IT career and making that wonderful, successful, prospective career in 2024 is what I'm going to talk about. All right. So fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. So let me tell a little bit about myself. So my name is uh, Sridhar Jamalamadaka and I'm the founder of Career Transformation Hub. So I am on a mission to make one lakh pro IT software engineers who don't worry about recession. So the reason is, I mean, my model is in such a way that those people who are in my community and those who are following me, so they, they will learn how to become very good at skills. Okay. So it's like, it's called an IT upskilling model. Okay. I'm going to talk about the IT upskilling model. So this model makes you super strong from foundation and it will make you like recession proof. I mean, even if there is some kind of firing, you won't bother about it. You see, see my story is this, that I'm coming from, uh, totally I've got around 15 years of experience in IT and I've done MTech from triple IT Bangalore. And I have worked in various companies. I've worked in various companies like Society General, Oracle, etc., etc. And Tech Mahindra, Tata Technologies. So multiple companies. Right now, I'm working as a architect for a national level project called Telemanus. So this is my journey. For starting from being, I'll tell you my story. So my story goes like this, that I was coming from a non-IT background in B.Tech. So I did uh, my B.Tech from electronics and communication engineering. And uh, I was not a computer science engineer at that point of time. Okay. So I got, I cracked the campus interview and then I got into Tech Mahindra and then when I joined TechMinder, the first day was very wonderful, okay? The reception was very amazing. And then the talk that they gave was very nice. And all the facilities of the company, they were very nice. I was very impressed, okay? But then they said something that, you see, we're going to train you with all the IT technologies for the next 45 days, okay? And then they said that if you fail this, you're going to be fired. And there was silence in the room. Everybody was shocked. We thought that we got a job, but then they, 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 they're, talking, they're talking about firing here. And they said, it's real. Every batch, we have some people which are, who are let go because their performance was not good in the exams that we conduct. Okay. So I was super serious and I worked very hard for the next 45 days and I learned a lot. That 45 days were amazing, amazing, amazing days of learning for me. So what I realized is this, that if we teach in a proper condensed format, it is possible to learn a lot. So what I learned then back then in 45 days, almost like it's even less than that 30 days, 15 days was non IT. It was just about confidence training, English, etc. So what I had learned was I had learned how to be like, um, how to learn, I learned how to write programs in Java, C language, Unix, SQL, all of this programming like this. All of that in just 30 days. I was really astonished. I thought, 
Why are we even spending four years in IT engineering? I mean, people are studying four years of engineering. I mean, why are they studying? I mean, why did I study four years for engineering? I mean, I felt like completely we're wasting time. So that's when, that's like the inspiration for me to think deep about this uh, IT upskilling. Okay. So that's when I thought like, you know, when taught in the proper way, we can learn technologies fast, really fast, much faster than we think we can. Okay. It's not going to take months. It's not going to take years. It's not like you need four years of education. You don't need years and years of education, months and months, months of training. All you need is a very, very condensed, super focused, wonderful trainers, experienced training, which can be delivered very quickly and very quickly you can get results. Okay, so this is what I believe in. Okay, see on top of that, you see, the problem today is we are seeing so many news today that AI is replacing jobs. Okay. So we are seeing news today that so many people are getting fired. In Google, they're getting fired. In IBM, they're getting fired. And they're getting fired everywhere. Almost like 2 lakh jobs are gone in the US. That's in the US. In India as well, many people are getting fired. Okay. So there's a lot that's going on. Okay. So the thing is, so I will say that this artificial intelligence is a very big threat for all the software engineers. So this is very, very, very important. I want to bring this attention to everybody here. I just want everybody to know very clearly that, you know, AI is a real threat. It's a real threat for our career. So those of you who want to become a good in IT career, AI is your enemy. I can tell you for sure. Because it's cutting jobs like never before. Today we can write code with the help of AI. So now, with every technology that comes, there are two options that we have. I'll tell you the story of Kodak. So Kodak was a company who was manufacturing reels and cameras for a long time. And it was like the market winner for a long, 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 long time. But then when the digital camera revolution came, Kodak was behind. It was losing it, losing the market. And then when the digital cameras came very soon, other companies like Canon, Nikon took over. And Kodak completely became obsolete now. Almost like, almost turned to nothing from such a big giant company. So the lesson that we can learn is whenever there is a threatening technology, we should embrace that technology. We should embrace that trend rather than run away from it. Okay. So that's my point. My point. So that's why my vision is make yourself so strong, so strong, so strong, so strong in upskilling, very strong in technology, so strong that you are resilient, you're, you're, you are recession proof. If you're going to get fired, you should get a 30% or 50% or 100% hike. It should be a good thing for you. It should feel good. Thank you for uh, firing me. You should not feel scared of getting fired. Okay. So that's what that's how I think. Okay, I'll tell you my story. See, at the moment, right now, I don't care. Okay, I know I'm very sure that you know I'll get a job anywhere. Because my skill set is so powerful. I put so much of effort. I put so much of, I have such a foundational knowledge. And it's very relevant to the industry. Okay. So that's how I am 100% sure, 100% confident. I don't really care at all what's happening in the market, recession, whatever, this, that, everything. Because I know I'm sure that I can get a job. Whatever I want. Okay. So this is what I want to teach. I want to teach people how to become super strong, how to embrace the threats like AI and be a warrior, be a winner and have a very successful career in IT. Okay. That's what I want to teach. All right. So any questions so far, if you have any questions, you can, you can, you know, raise your hand or put it in the chat. I'll just answer you.
Okay, any questions in the, you can put it in the chat. All right, so no questions. So let's start now. So that was about me. So I was talking about myself, like how I spent 15 years in the IT and I worked in various technologies and various companies and I mastered so many technologies, hours and hours of work. And then I realized there is a shortcut for learning things and there's a way to approach the career, okay? So I'm going to discuss all of that. What are the three secrets for a successful IT career? Okay, so let's just find out. So what's a successful IT career? Let's begin. Okay, here we go. So before we start, can I have your commitment that you'll be staying till the end? So can you please type in the chat? that I am, yes, 100%, type 100% in the chat, if you're committed to stay till the end. Thank you very much. Okay, so here we go. So right now, so the IT industry in India is like really booming, going very well, and the number of hiring has is like never before, but then I told you that there is a threat here. So there is a little bit of decline that's also happening, okay? So this is because of technologies like AI, etc., and recession and AI and etc. So this is a landscape right now. And so AI is only going to become stronger and it can replace more and more developers in future. And talking about recessions, recessions are like, it's like a cycle, okay? It's like economy is going up and down, up and down. You know, this is, it's like a cycle. It's, it's like normal. So let's say our career is spanning for 40 years from now to 2024 to 2064. So there'll be at least three to four recessions or more, which we have to survive. So at that point of time, if we are not strong enough, who is going to pay our bills? So at that time, we'll be having some commitments. We'd have purchased some apartment, car, etc. There'll be some EMI to pay. Who's going to pay at that time of downtown? Downtown. You see? And the problem is, if you are not having skills which are relevant for the industry, you'll become irrelevant. Okay, so let's start with the secret number one. The first secret for IT skill mastery is always stay relevant. What does that mean? Always stay relevant. So what basically it means is Always you must be knowing what are the trends that are going on, what are the uptrends and downtrends, both. And you should know what are obsolete technologies. You should know which one has more jobs in India because the something which is trending in the USA may not be trending in India. So it may not be translating into jobs. For example, there are some technologies which are trending very well, but then the number of jobs in India are very low. So we don't, we're not interested in that, right? So we, we want, we don't want to be obsolete and we want, you know, the, the trends which are going up and we, which have more jobs. Okay. So the first thing is don't work on obsolete technologies. So what are these obsolete technologies? For example, IBM mainframes and some proprietary technologies. So the proprietary technologies. So many companies, they create their own frameworks, own languages, own things. If you're going to be a master of that for five, six years, and if you're trying to find some job outside later, you're not going to get a job. You'll like really struggle, okay? So this is the first secret. So always stay relevant, always just look at the trends. I mean, I'll just show you like where you can look for some trends. 
I'll show you some places where you can look for some trends. Okay, let's just look at some trends right now. Okay, so one place that you can look for is like stack overflow trends. Okay, so this is a place where you can see some trends. Let's see some trends now. Let's see what are the most pro most most popular programming languages. Okay, we'll just we'll we'll put some names: Python, .NET, Java, Scala. And Golang. Okay, so you can see here, and I'll put JavaScript. I'll put React. No, not, not React. Okay, we'll just compare the programming languages first. So you can see here, this is Python. Python is like trending, super trending. And the next is JavaScript. And the next is Java, which is coming down from 2014. It's declining. Okay, 2014 was the peak, and now it's like declining. Java is going down. Okay. We have R programming language is going strong. And we have .NET, which is like now again coming in the uptrend. Okay, in, in it was like in the peaks in the 2008-2009 that time. ASP.NET, but now it's like picking up a little bit. Go is not much. Okay, so here this is like some kind of idea to see. And there are many more insights that you can see. Or you can see the Stack Overflow Annual Developer Survey. I'll see 2023 results. Let's just see what are the technologies that are most popular. So JavaScript, Python, SQL, Java, and C Sharp. C Sharp is actually raising very much. That's that's a great news. So those of you who are doing C Sharp.net, that's great. Okay. And what else? And I'll tell you something. So right now the trend is. There's a lot of rise for this data analyst role. So if you want to get into data analysis, this is a great time to start. So which is like Power BI or Tableau. It's all going good. Okay. Or if you want to go for full stack development, that's also a great trend. Full stack development is like a combination of uh, technologies. It can be like Java plus React.js or it can be C sharp.net plus React.js or Angular like that. Okay, or it can be like Python plus a front end framework. This is a front end framework. Okay. We also great technology. So these are all great combinations and we have AI technologies. So the problem with AI technologies is that the freshers don't have an entry to get into AI. That's a problem. Okay. So I will say that these are like the main things and other one is like DevOps is also good. DevOps has like great future. Again, DevOps also a lot of skill is required. Must be a master of uh, a cloud technology. Very good master of it. Have good knowledge of uh, networking and a little bit of uh, unix programming shell scripting scripting also must be good very strong at configuration and os okay so that's what it is so like that so with these are the trends okay so make sure you are in the trends okay your career just don't lose the track of it is that okay okay so now let's go to the second secret now.
And the second secret is What is this? Continuous learning. Always keep learning. This is a very, very important thing to stay relevant. I'll tell you a story. I'll tell you a story of a person like, let's say that there's a person who I know who's not good at learning, who doesn't like to, you know, learn technologies or spend much time on it. And as a result of that, what happened with that person is like, he stayed back with one company for a long time, almost like 10 to 15 years, with almost like stagnant career growth, absolutely no career growth. I mean, at the age of like 50 or something, he became a tech lead. Okay. And absolutely stagnant career growth and very, very slow salary growth but i know like some people who are very good at upskilling i've seen myself were just mastering technology after technology that's it and i saw them grow through like going to microsoft going through so many different companies like that okay so what does it say so this is what it says. So the lesson here is that you must stay relevant in the industry and you must work on new technologies and you must be willing to learn the new technologies. If you're not willing to learn new technologies, then you're going to become irrelevant in the market. So continuous learning is compulsory. So you know, the, see the, the attitude that we have is I will study only if there is something like yeah, I have to do it. I mean, for example, if I have to crack an interview, I will study. I don't want to study just, just like that. This is the mindset which I don't like. It's not just me. The result of such mindset is fear and uh, scarcity. There's a threat. So it just has, it's just a mindset change. That's it. You know, you just have to make your mind, reprogram it and make continuous learning a habit. And again, I don't say there are hundreds of technologies don't go everywhere. For example, there can be a full stack developer who's right now, let us say, who's uh, working on Python plus React.js. You know, I, I would recommend him to learn Power BI. No need. It's like a different field altogether. And even in full stack development also, this person doesn't need to spend a lot of time on what is Node.js, etc. Not required, may be useful, but it's not focused learning. There must be a structure, there must be a plan. And every single day we must be growing, every single day we must be learning. If you're so strong, then you can work in the dream companies also. Like I said, some people are, you know, just cracking this code. So this is what I have personally experienced also that I was very passionate about learning technologies and always I used to invest my time in learning new technologies and or deepening my understanding of the existing technology. So that made me very important in the organization. Every organization where I worked, I was very much valued. They look at me like a jewel. Whatever I say, they will do. It's just because of knowledge. Okay, and, and I never felt the threat of getting fired or anything. It was never. And even if it was the case, I happily moved. I never got fired. But again, getting fired is like sometimes business driven. So it's not always our uh, something to do with our performance. If the business is not doing well, they'll fire. But luckily, I, I was not fired. I mean, in any organization that I work, luckily, I will say that. It's just luck. Because it can happen to anyone. Okay, I don't say that it's because of bad skill or bad work. Happened to anyone, but the point here, what I'm trying to make is I've already always been in the premium position as an expert and everybody used to value me and they still value me in whatever place, wherever I work, they value me. The, the reason they why they value me is because I offer deep insights. 
I have the deep knowledge in the technology. And it's not incidental. It is hard work. So it's a mindset. You have to work very hard and you have to learn new technologies. So let's just see some examples of that. So continuous learning. Okay, let us say that you are a backend developer. Okay. How can you improve yourself? Let us say you know Java. How do you expand your knowledge? If you know Java, start with learning design patterns. Design patterns are advanced kind of a usage of object-oriented programming in such a way that some kind of problems are addressed. So within the design patterns also, you can study these patterns, observer, factory method, singleton, template, and builder. I'm just giving you some examples, okay? So when I'm going to work in my future programs, I'm going to explain all of this. What are the design patterns? How to use these design patterns? All of this I explain in my programs, okay? That's what I do. So right now, so that's about Java. If you're, if you're learning Java, you learn all of this. And then the next thing that you should learn if you're, if you're into Java is learn Spring very well. And in that also just focus on Spring Boot. Don't get into the uh, legacy Spring. That's not required. Mainly focus on the Spring Boot. And in the Spring Boot also focus on these things like dependency injection and controllers, services, repository. I'll just put it as JPA. JPA, Java Persistent, Java Persistent API. Okay. And um, Spring REST API. How to write REST APIs using Spring. So all of this just become a master of all of this. Okay, this is how you will proceed, you know, when you're in Java. What else you learn? You can learn something like Hibernate. Okay. Or Juke. So or JDBC in detail, you learn all of this. Okay, so this is what you'll do if you're into Java. So you can go deeper. And then what else can you learn to supplement your knowledge? You learn something like Kafka. Kafka is a messaging queue system. Okay, messaging queue, very important, right? Messaging broker. Kafka or RabbitMQ. Okay, and uh, you can learn Elasticsearch. Very important. If you want to add search functionality to your website, you can add Elasticsearch. The best choice for it. And you can add some caching technologies like Hazelcast, Redis, okay? You can, you can learn all of this. And then what else? So this is about Java. And then, you know, you can become a master of microservices. Learn what is domain-driven design. Okay, learn how to use Spring Cloud. Spring Netflix components. Okay. And the many, many components which are related to the microservices. Learn all the microservices patterns. Become a master of microservices. Just see how I give a path for back and backend developer. So it's like every single day you're learning something new, something new, something new, something new, something new. You're becoming deeper, deeper, better, better, better. Deeper, deeper, better, better, better. You know, this is how it's like a step by step, step by step, step by step. Okay. So it's like this, right? So it's like this. If you have to, let's say, walk for or run a marathon, right? So marathon is like how many? So 21 kilometers. So it's like, how do you run? It's like step by step. If you have to climb a mountain, how do you do it? Step by step. You don't jump from here to here. Right? So this is how you should run. Okay, this is how you should be working. 
So the way you should be working is like step by step. That's the formula. Every day is learning. So just keep upskilling, learn all of this. If you're a backend developer, learn all of this. So something like this, you know, I can develop a curriculum for you based on your requirement and I can give you like a full year plan. In one year, what you should become an expert in? In two years, what should you become an expert in? In three years, what expertise you should get? And you will become super duper strong. So when you become super duper strong, I'll tell you what are the benefits of becoming super duper strong in technologies. When you become super duper strong in technologies, you will get promotions very easily. It's very easy for you to switch companies. You can work in the best, smartest companies. You can work in product companies also. Okay, and then you can demand the compensation that you deserve. Okay, and you'll have a lot of respect within the team. You can lead people. You can coach people. Okay, you will have a say in designing the architecture, taking decisions. Okay, the management will ask you for, you know, ideas. So these are the benefits. These are just some of the benefits. There are many more. I told you like you will become recession proof. I'll say AI proof. You will not be replaced by AI. How many of you want to be replaced by AI? Suddenly they lay off and say, you know, we have got an AI tool better than you. So we have to beat that. We have to use AI to beat AI. Right? So you have to make your career AI proof also. So this is what you have to do. So you have to do IT upscaling. Okay. So that's the secret number two. The secret number two is continuous learning. So whatever field you are in, find a coherent set of technologies and go deeper. So they call it the T curve. What's that T curve? You know what's a T curve? T is the bread. This is the breadth and this is the depth. So your technology knowledge should be like this. Go deeper in some focused areas. Let us say you're like a backend developer. You should have a deep knowledge in some technologies. Like, you know, if you're a backend developer, you should be like very good at Java and Spring. Expert at it. And on the breadth aspect, you will learn some things like Kafka. You learn Webflux. Okay, a little bit of other programming languages, maybe a little bit of AWS, maybe a little bit of Jenkins. All this is breadth. So it's called a T, T engineer, right? So you have to be really, really good at it. Okay. So that's when you can get all of these benefits. And apart from that, you can become an architect in future as well. You can become a tech lead, you can become an architect. So these are the multiple benefits. Is that okay? Yeah. So, how many of you are learning something here? Okay. So, type me in the chat if you learned something so far. Type me. Thank you. All right. So, let's look at secret number three. Secret number three. Secret number three is productivity and problem solving. So this, this secret is all about become productive and expert in problem solving. This is a separate skill. See, problem solving is not Java. It is not JavaScript, okay? It has got nothing to do with Java or JavaScript or Python. This is a skill in itself. Productivity is a mindset. How do you become productive? How do you get, how do you learn problem solving? What is the problem solving I'm talking about? I'm talking about debugging skills. 
Let us say that there is an issue in the production and they come to you. How quickly can you find out what the issue is? How quickly can you fix it effectively without affecting the existing system? That's debugging. That's problem solving skills. And you know what? I teach all of this in detail. In my program, I teach what is the program's problem solving skills? What is, what is debugging skills? How do you debug? How do you find patterns? How do you go closer to the problem? Okay, and you know what is productivity all about? I'll tell you a story, okay? Okay, so one of my friends, one of my acquaintances, I will say, like she came to me and she said, you know what, I'm, I don't have any time for learning new technologies. I said, okay, what's the problem? And then she said, see, the thing is, I become, uh, I, I'm so occupied. I said, why are you so occupied? She said that I have, I have a lot of things to do. I'm asked to do a lot of things. Asked, um, what is the problem? Then she said, I'm working on these things even on the Saturdays and Sundays, even after coming back home. I asked, is it like really so much of work? I said, no, there's not so much work. But still then, why are you working so hard? Why are you working so long? She says, you see, the reason is like, I don't know what's going on. Then I had to speak with her. I had to find out and I dig the problem and I explained her. I told her, I think your problem is this. You're getting stuck at things. I mean, you're, you're trying to solve some problems without understanding the problem. I mean, you don't understand what exactly is the root cause and you start fixing it and you lose a lot of time. Is that correct? She said, yes, that's my problem. I said, first fix that. Don't get into the solution until you work on the problem. Understand the problem 100%. Understand the bug. This is the root cause. This is the reason why this has come. And then you start fixing. At least spend one hour. I just said that trick. And that helped her a lot. She came back to me and she said that she's now much faster. And she said, I am able to, okay, that problem is solved. But the other problem here is that I'm slow at working. And I said, you need to improve your productivity. And she said, how can I improve my productivity? Okay, so let's talk about that. So it's about improving productivity because if you are productive, the point is, if you're productive, with a lot of good things that happen to you, what has happened? So you get more time, am I right? You get more time and you are able to solve things faster and uh, your management loves you and you'll become the go-to person and you learn a lot. So you'll be looked at like a very productive person. Okay. So this is very essential that, you know, you stay productive. So how do you be productive? So you can see the thing is you can be productive. I'll tell you something very important. Software is not about coding. A lot of you people may think software is just coding. No, that's not software. You know what software is typically? The software that we build. Tell me some examples. Let's talk about Zoom. We are using Zoom here. Do you see any code here? Are you seeing any if else loop when you're using Zoom? How many of you are seeing if else loop? Now we saw the Facebook, okay, WhatsApp. What made you download WhatsApp on your phone? Is it because of the programming complexity? Is it because of the programming language that was used was very good? Or because of features? Type in the chat. What's more important for a software? Is it the programming language or the features? What's important? Features. That's absolutely right. It's the features that matters, not the programming language, okay? So it's the features that matter. The thing is, software has something called as domain. Domain means the area in which you're working. The various domains in IT, like banking, retail, insurance, telecom, so many are there like that. Edutech, e-commerce, government, healthcare. So you need to have a deep knowledge of domain. 
just understand this don't think that you know if you have coding it's enough it's not at all like that okay you need to have some deep domain knowledge are you getting me so don't think just about when you're upskilling don't think just about java 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 along with java you should have domain knowledge focus on the domain knowledge fix up one domain i'm the reason see i've worked on multiple domains because i was not very much interested in any one of them actually i i just i've kept switching but i would recommend if you can stick to one two domains you can get some deep knowledge i, I told you about the t curve right have a little bit of breadth but depth should be in one domain stick to one two domains max not more than that that's what i learned in my career okay so be good at domain knowledge so this domain knowledge is going to help you and when you're going to look at your experience they're going to look at your domain knowledge i'm telling you trust me i have done hundreds of interviews so the first thing that i look at is relevant experience i see okay is he good at java is he good at c sharp is he good at this that and see what is his domain does he understand a little bit about this domain if yes then that's also one of the parameters it's a plus i won't say this is the only thing but this is one of the important things one of the parameters very important okay domain knowledge is very important focus on the domain knowledge and if you have good domain knowledge and good technical skills let's just stay this is a good domain knowledge good technical skills and if you can add just one more circle to that good business skills then you can actually become you can actually become a founder of a startup and you can actually become or some kind of millionaire okay i'm saying if you are interested if you want to focus on you know if you can add the business angle to your deep domain knowledge and technology you see the thing is this is like market knowledge so if you have a deep knowledge of how insurance works just look at policy bazaar right such a nice website they did a very good job i i like it very much very simple they just solved the problem one problem was clearly there we i we just i mean as a, i just want to see and compare policies as simple as that simple problem they took that they had a deep knowledge of the domain about insurance deep knowledge and the technology they just got it right we don't know what technologies they are using but it's just flawless they have the quality of uh, coding everything is done and they just solved the problem and they just marketed it and that's where they found the sweet spot you see this is the secret of you know learn domain knowledge very well and we are talking about productivity right how to be productive in it you can be productive if you know concepts if you don't know the concepts you will spend a lot of time in just googling about it of course thanks to chat gpt things are much better now but even chat gpt won't be able to help you there'll be a dead end okay if you ask question number 1 question number 2 question number 3 dead end google gives up much faster it will give you hundreds of results it's like a lot of waste of time so for every single thing you'll have to google if you don't have a strong conceptual knowledge you're going to waste hundreds of hours and you'll be losing productivity so know your know about your project the technology the, the, the company where you're working you should know your code base you should know the database in and out so spend some time learning about the project and the code base and the technology and the and the database all of this okay and on top of that get all the concepts clear you know if you're talking about git what are the concepts what is a merge what is a pull what is push okay pull push are basic how do you merge a, a request okay what is remote mm -hmm. right what is fast forward many concepts are there in git i teach all of that so these are the things that you should learn okay this is another secret if you are productive at work simple okay i know some people you know who come to the office for 8 hours they just finish their work in 2 hours the rest of the 6 hours they have it at their disposal how many of you want that finish your work in 2 hours rest of the 6 hours do whatever you want one day's work they will finish in 2 hours this is what i'm talking about if you are productive you'll have time i know the other extreme which is more common 
Like there's some people who come for eight hours and take a break, take a break, take a break, take a break, four breaks. This is like almost like two hours breaks, six hours remaining. In that six hours also work is not done. Work is extending. So till 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Morning 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. I've seen that. Okay, extra hours. How many more extra? Eight hours plus four hours, 12 hours plus four hours. So how much of time of waste? So six hours plus four hours, 10 hours wasted. So if you become productive, you can actually save 10 hours a day. Almost that's like 50 hours a week. So almost like you can almost do anything that you want in 50 hours a week. Do you see the power of productivity? It's so important that you need to be productive. Right? Be fast at solving the problems. Be fast at analyzing the code, analyzing the requirements. Coding super fast. How can we do super fast coding? Super fast coding is possible with the help of AI tools like chat GPT. Like GitHub Pilot. Copilot. So use these tools. I mean, I'm going to teach you how to use chat GPT, how to use GitHub Copilot to write code very fast. Just generate the code very, 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 very super fast and run it fast and test if the code is working fast and check it in fast. That's it. Done. Done for the day. Right, two hours, finish your work. Rest of the six hours, do whatever you want. Okay. So this is what I teach. Okay. So these are the things that I spoke about today. So the three secrets that I spoke about is like always stay relevant. Just find out what the trends don't work on obsolete technologies, proprietary technologies, stay away from them. Work on trending technologies always. If necessary, switch your uh, technologies. And I spoke about continuous learning. How important is continuous learning? If you're learning continuously, how you can benefit. And I spoke about how problem solving skills are very important and productivity is very important. If you're very good at problem solving, debugging, and if you're very productive at work, you'll have so much of time with you that you can do anything that you want. Okay. This was what I, was, what I spoke about. Now, so... I hope you're learning something. So is it okay if I speak a little bit about my program? Is it okay if I can speak about my program? Type yes in the chat. So type yes in the chat if it's okay if I can speak about my program. So far, I just spoke about the webinar. If you give me permission, I'll speak about what I teach at Career Transformation Hub. Okay, so just type yes in the chat. Do I have your permission? Type yes in the chat. Okay, so this is like the end of the webinar. If you want to leave, you can leave. But if you want to hear about what I teach, what is this career transformation hub all about, then you can just stay back. Okay, for those of you who are just looking for the webinar, it's done right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. So let me talk a little bit about like, what's the program that I do? So I'm working on the Career Transformation Hub. So my goal is to make one lakh IT professionals become AI proof. Use AI in their advantage so that AI don't replace them. Become recession proof. And have fulfilling career work on the technologies that they want to 
at the salary that they deserve to get with the flexibility that they deserve having it without losing their work life balance so this is my goal this this is my mission okay so for that what i'm teaching here is like i'm teaching a various things here so first of all i'm, I'm going to teach about uh, technical skills Apart from that, mindset, I'll work on mindset also. How can we change our mindset? How can we have a continuous learning mindset? How can we learn some debugging skills, productivity skills, right? So debugging skills, problem solving skills. And apart from that, I conduct a lot of hackathons. Okay, I conduct a lot of hackathons. So I work on the mindset, I work on the technical skills, I work on the debugging, I work on the hackathons, multiple hackathons, and I make them learn something every hackathon. So this is like a lifetime membership where you have access to all these hackathons for life. And you'll have access to everything that I'm going to teach for life. So every week, I'll have two calls. One is called as the inner circle call. Inner circle call, I speak about various methodologies of learning IT technologies. I speak about what are the trending technologies every single week and how to learn them, how to approach, what are the resources that you can take. That is the inner circle call. And every week I'll conduct a hackathon. So in this hackathon, you will get uh, Actually, you will get in this hackathon, you will be like getting every week, you will learn something new practically. So this is much more powerful than, you know, understanding theory. You'll actually have hands on knowledge of what you're learning. Every week, I'll make you code and I'll be evaluating. And apart from that, I'll be doing some kind of uh, live calls. Like, for example, if they have any doubts, any questions, guidance, etc they can be answered. So it's like a group coaching format. So in that, if anybody has any doubts about their career, how to take decision, what to do, what, what, what which offer to pick up, etc. I teach them. Apart from this, I also teach uh, interview skills, how to prepare for an interview. I teach negotiation skills, how to negotiate with HRs and how to do it okay so actually the cost of this program is 14,999 and what you get from this is like like i said you get live courses there's some courses which are uh, which are which you get some live courses recorded courses and weekly call and you get weekly hackathon so like we have hackathons Okay, and it's a community. Just try to understand that this is not just about one person teaching. It's like I put you into groups, into WhatsApp groups, and you will have like-minded people with whom you can practice. Okay, so you get all of this. So now let me tell you something, guys. So here is this thing, okay? I'm starting out right now, and... I want to give this program in exchange for, you know, your testimonials. So I would like, you know, if you are going to give me, I'll give you a survey link and I'll ask you some questions about like, what are the pain points that you're facing? What is the kind of program that you're looking for? And if you answer me in this survey link, okay. I will be giving you one clarity call, career clarity call, which is 30 minutes. And super excited to tell you, I'm going to give you this membership for free. Yes. 
You heard that right. I'll give this 14,999 membership for free. All you have to do is you have to fill a survey link. That's it. That's it. There's no other strings attached. As simple as that. You'll get a career clarity call, 30 minutes. And I'm going to give you this membership absolutely free. You'll be able to start joining my inner circle calls from the coming weeks and my hackathons. So how many of you are interested? Type me in the chat. If you're interested in getting the survey link, I'll give you the survey link and I will give you this entire membership for free. And I will teach you all of this. Like I said, I'm going to teach about design patterns. I'm going to talk about Java. I'm going to talk about Spring Boot. I'm going to talk about front end technologies, frameworks, Angular, React JS, Node.js, Express JS, responsive web API, responsive web. I'll speak about APIs, REST API, GRPC, authentication, authorization, all of this. You'll learn a lot. Okay. Everything absolutely for free. Okay. So all I want is like, I need, I need you to fill a survey link for that. That's it. I'm going to, it's like survey link. It's not like big questions, like simple questions, like what, where, what is your current situation where you are? What are you doing, etc. And what is it that you're looking for? Questions around that. Is that okay? All right. Is it okay? So just put me a message if you're interested and then I'll reply you back right now. If you're interested in this course, reply me right now in the chat and I'll give you the link how you can register. Okay. Yeah. I'm seeing that some people are giving me this. Just reply them. I'll paste them the link here. Okay. Here is the link. Okay. We are closing the call in another two minutes. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Do you have any questions? Any questions? How was the session? You liked it? Learned something? Yes? No? No? No or yes? Yes or no? Type in the chat. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So I'll just give you some links where you can uh, join my community. So it's like my Facebook community. If anybody's in interested to join my Facebook community, you can just stay in touch with me through these links. I'm just sending you my Facebook community link. So here is the link. So just use this link if you want to stay in touch with me. And I do this uh, something called as the full stack launch pad every Friday. Okay, I'm doing like I'm teaching full stack technologies, how to become an expert in full stack technologies. Okay, full stack launch pad, I'm doing one webinar, IT skill mastery, I'm doing one webinar. And in every webinar, every week, I don't repeat the same thing. I tell new secrets. I talk about new secrets. Okay, so that's how you can stay in touch with me. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you and see you. This is Sridhar signing off. See you. Bye. Thank you.